This week, Jesus moves on to Jerusalem from our previous weeks. He was in places like Caesarea Philippi and then near the Sea of Galilee. And now he's in Jerusalem and he has just overturned the tables of the, the uh, merchants in the temple. And the Pharisees and the scribes are upset with him. They say, well, you're, you're not a Levitical priest. You're not from the tribe of Levi. What authority, by what authority do you do this? And he tells this parable of the two sons. And he essentially says, my cousin, John the Baptist, was from the tribe of Levi, but you, you didn't listen to him. That's his conclusion at the end of the parable. So he tells a story about the two sons. And <clears throat> the father goes, and he must have called the sons by name, calls them by name, and then he goes to each one individually. He says, go, go out in the vineyard, my son. Maybe it was James and John, or Jacob, or Esau, or Andrew, or Philip, or Andrew and Peter. And he says, go, go out in the field and work. And one son, yeah, I'll do that. And then disappears, doesn't do it. Doesn't do what the father asks him. And he goes to the other son, you know, hey, go out to the vineyard and, and, and work. No, I'm not doing that. And then later thinks better of it and, and goes. Initially, these sons do not realize who they are before the father. He calls them by name, and then he goes to them. James, go out into the field. John, go out into the field. But they don't realize who they are before the Father. And they both initially don't do the Father's will. One eventually comes to realize who he is in a certain sense hey, I'm the son of the father, I'm James, and I need to go out there and do what the father asked me to do. They don't realize who they are. And this is the same issue with the ancient people of God. They are blaming God in the, the book of Ezekiel. You sent us into exile because you're punishing us for our ancestors' sins. And God the Father, through the prophet Ezekiel, reminds them, no, it is because of your own sins. You don't realize who you are before me. I have called you by name, and you don't realize it. Paul reminds us of the name of the Son who does obey the Father in everything. Beautiful Christological confession in this second chapter of Philippians. Though he was in the form of God, he didn't regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being obedient in everything. And it says, <laughs> at the name of Jesus, he's given him this name. He's given him this name. The Father gave him this name, which means God saves. Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bend. Not only the obedient, but the disobedient will bend the knee in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Under the earth means the people, the souls that are in hell will bend the knee at the name of Jesus. Because he's obedient to the Father. He understands his relationship to the Father and the, his name and what his name means. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says, this was a jaw dropper for me. In paragraph 2158, everyone's name is sacred. 
Everyone's name is sacred. No, as little, I wanted to look up what my name meant. John is Hebrew. That's the Hebrew origin, and it means God's gracious gift. I dated a girl named Sarah many, 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 many years ago. I looked up what her name meant, also Hebrew, and it means princess. Our names are sacred, and the catechism follows in that same section, 2158, and it says that the name of a person which is sacred is an icon of the person. It's an image of the person. It, it's out there. And it says something about who this is. See, these sons in the gospel, they didn't understand their, their name before the Father and the meaning of the name. In the second chapter of the book of Revelations, it says that the one that is obedient will give the true manna, the Christ, and he will write a new name on a white stone for those who follow him, a new name. Can you imagine, friends? Our name is sacred, And then we have this name that may be known to God alone and only to us in the inner recesses of our hearts. Could it be that God who has made my fingerprints, your fingerprints completely unique from every other person in the world, he's made my DNA, your DNA, completely distinct from any other person in the world, that he has given us a name known only to him. That's the dignity that we have before the Father. Could it be? Can you imagine every single person having a unique name given to us by God the Father. See, this is why sin doesn't make any sense. This is why the disobedience of the people of God makes no sense. This is why the sons, especially the one that didn't do the will of the Father, makes no sense because they don't understand, we don't understand who we are before God. And if it is true, that God has given each of us a sacred name. We pray for that day when we have our exit interview and we come before him and he calls that name and whatever is awakened in us in the inner recesses of our hearts that recognizes that name is brought to life and he says come receive the kingdom <laughs>